In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, today we are making our fifth stop on this great journey of the holy and great land. And we are assisting to the conversation of the Lord with his disciples and see how important it is to understand the gospel, to understand the prophecies. Because as Jesus said, if we change just a comma or a dot, it entirely changes the meaning of the gospel. And this is what we are facing here. Because of the wrong interpretation of the scribes and Pharisees of the Torah, even the disciples, even though he's preparing them, telling that we are going to Jerusalem for the feast, for Pascha, right? for the Passover, and the Son of Man is going to be betrayed and given into, given into the hands of the Gentiles, and they will mock him. They will make fun of him. They will, they will crucify him. They will put him to death. But this is not the end. After three days, he will raise again. I'll come again. So, and even after this discussion, two of his disciples are approaching him. Lord, when you come in, in your glory, when you become the king of Jerusalem, so put us, one of us on your right and one on your left. So pretty much to govern together. So that was their interpretation because of the misinterpretation of their clerics, like their clergy. And th this is, unfortunately, in our days, the misinterpreting of the gospel led us to over 30,000 of Christian denominations. Because of exactly of the same concept. We don't understand and we want to interpret the, the words of God with our own mind and understanding and ignoring completely and entirely the Holy Fathers that gave their life to give us the ultimate product. So we do not need to invent anything, to discover anything. Everything is put for us. <coughs> we have the gospel and we have the Holy Fathers. We have the Holy Councils, which everything is given to us. We don't need to, need to come with anything new. We just need to follow the teachings that they had given us. That's all. <clears throat> but you see, many of our contemporary are trying to discover something new, to discover a God according to their own understanding and needs. Not the God that is presented for us. Not the God that was crucified for us and raised for, for us. But a God according to our own feelings. A God that will say, oh, you want to drink? It's okay. You want to have fun? It's okay. You want to sin? It's okay. You want to have drugs? It's okay. This is the God, the new era, the, new, the modern man wants. The God that said, oh, hey, it's fine, just give me your 10% and we're fine. Right? Because this is pretty much all these newborn Christians are doing. Right? Oh, you're good. God is love and forgives everything. Well, yes, he forgives everything, but there is a way. There's a, there's a specific way that God forgives, and this <coughs> comes in hand the life <coughs> of St. Mary of Egypt that we are celebrating today. The first half of her life, she spent in a sinful manner of life, in lost living. She left her parents' house at the age of 12. And since 
the age of 30, she lived this lustful and dissolute life that is beyond the imagination of any human being. But the second half of her life is a completely different life that it is an example for repentance for the majority of us. It's an example of devotion. It's an example of prayer and obedience. So, as I mentioned, at the age of 30, she heard this group of people going from Egypt to the Holy Land to venerate the tomb of Christ. And in her mind, immediately said, oh, on the ship is going to be a lot of nice men, so I'll have an opportunity to sin again. So that was her idea. That was the reason of her getting in that, in that boat in the first place. And of course she did whatever she wanted, right? But while she got there, the multitude of people, everybody was going to the church of the resurrection where, where, where the tomb of Christ is. And seeing everybody going, she decided to go too. Why not? But there something happened that changed her life entirely. While everybody was entering the church freely, an invisible power was blocking her. She tried multiple times, but she was stopped. And now she got on her side and she started reflecting on her life. Wait a minute, there is a reason that everybody is going, but I can't. Something is going on, right? Is the spiritual awakeness when we are getting somehow to our back to our senses and we are starting, wait a minute, what am I doing? What am I doing here? <coughs> I sinned as the prodigal son. I sinned against heaven and against you. And we are started reflecting on all our life, all our deeds, what we did and what we could change or avoid, right? And see, this, this is very important because seeing that, she could say, oh, God is done with me. There is no, no chance for me, right? There is no salvation for me because many people, oh, I sinned, I'm not worthy, I'll continue with what I'm doing and doing even worse. And she could do worse things for herself, right? But see, she was a fighter. Seeing from the position she, she, was, she saw the doors of the church being open, she saw the icon of the Theotokos, the mother of God. And she immediately started the conversation with the mother of God. Intercede for me. Become for me that the, the connection put a word for me for your son. And if he allows me to venerate the tomb, to venerate the cross, on which he was crucified. I will dedicate my entire life. And she was allowed. She went there. She cried bitterly for, for her deeds. She repented. She confessed and took communion. <clears throat> and after that, she took a few loaves, loaves of bread and departed into the desert. So, with those 
three or four loaves of bread. She spent it 47 years in the desert. 47 years. Spending the, all this entire time in repentance and fighting for the, the passions, the carnal passions. So in 47 years, she did not see a human being. She just was fighting with the evil ones. You see, the first half of her life, completely different from the second half. And she is showing us that everything is possible for those that believe, for those that are obedient to God and to his word. <coughs> and again, what we understand from this, that the sin becomes a barrier between us and God. It's like a wall. And we cannot receive the grace of God. Even though many of us, we go to church, right? And we are not blocked. But that doesn't mean that we are actually doing good and well. <clears throat> there is a, it's a difficult path that we have to follow in order to reach that she was able to walk on the waters after 47 years when God allowed one of the Pesachists of, of that region, Ava Zosimas, during the Holy Land, they were like the, 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 the first week they will depart from the monastery and live in the desert and just come back on the Holy Thursday. And in this period, he saw, he didn't know what it was, but he saw something like a lightning in the desert, walking on the water, barely touching the, the ground. He was amazed, amazed with this. Who is this and what? And finally, with through the divine providence, he's approaching and he's learning from her her entire life. This is how we know about her. And he was amazed. And after 47 years, for the first time, she's taking the Holy Communion. And the next year when he come, he found her dead on in the in the desert so but again it's it's a miracle as imagine the de de desert right how many animals are dwelling in there and could eat her body right but it didn't happen because it was a sanctified body and this is the meaning of the the holy lantern you know, to fight with our passions, to break this barrier between us and God, to get rid of the sin, because the sin is that barrier. <clears throat> and unfortunately, it's not the sin that is actually dividing us, because there is repentance, but when we are not repenting, this is what is the, the dividing us from God. Because everybody living, bearing the flesh, we are sin. And even the saints, you see, all the saints, they, they had difficulties, they had issues, they had temptations, and they had sin. But they repented. This is the difference. Living as, ah, it's okay, it's fine, doing everything else. That's okay. We are human beings. We live in the world. We can, we can protect ourselves intact from sin. It's, it's normal. So when we are taking it for granted and we accept it, that's just the way that we, we are, right? And then 
She's like the first half of her life, she she was living the life that the dissolute life. She, she accepted it like a normal way of living, right? And this is the majority of our contemporaries today. We just oh, it is what it is. We can't do anything. Well, of course we can. We can, and we have so many examples. But the first example is Jesus Christ himself. Because this is what he told in the gospel to his disciples today. That what is going to happen, I'm doing it willingly. I'm not forced to do this. I'm doing it willingly. So you see, he wants us to accept the cross and to lift it up on our shoulders willingly. Not being forced, because if he want <coughs> that, he would force us. Right? He said, this is what it is. Everybody is going to do that. No, he is not breaking our free will, our freedom. But he is making us to make the decision. Whoever wants, let them accept, let them take up his cross and follow me. Whoever wants. He's not going to force us, anyone. But we are taking advantage of, his, advantage of his love, of this freedom, and what we are doing instead, living a life according to our own imagination, to our own interpretation, and denying his sacrifice, denying his love, denying his will, and accepting his enemy and following his enemy and becoming the tools of his enemy, the tools which, with which the enemy, the Antichrist, moved those from the ancient time to crucify him, and we are becoming his crucifiers along with them because we are disobedient, we are full of hatred, we are evil, we are lying, including ourselves. We are lying so professionally to ourselves that, you know, oh, it's fine, We're, you're doing good, actually, you know. We do not want to accept the bitter reality. My dear brothers, we have to take it seriously, because that's the reason of our life being here. We are temporary here. We're not here forever. And we have to take advantage of every single second. Every single second to take advantage of it and turn everything in to benefit our salvation towards good, towards love, which is Christ. That's the, that's the only path that can lead us to the resurrection, to our own and eternal resurrection with Christ. Amen. God bless you all.